Embellishments or accent graphics as shown behind me. What are those? Well, basically today I'm gonna to show you how to take this particular layout and there's gonna be three different variations. I'm gonna show you how you can use what I call embellishments or accent graphics to really change the mood and the feel of a layout based on its purpose. So that sounds a little bit confusing, but you'll see quickly how we can use these embellishments to really change the feel and the look of a layout. And then you have your own challenge to take this layout here and you can play with it. I'm giving you a lot of freedom to utilize what you learn in this video, utilizing embellishments, utilizing AI to finish the layout in your own kind of mood, in your own tone. Do you want it to feel serious? Do you want it to feel fun and playful? So that's going to be the challenge. Definitely check out designcourse.com if you haven't yet for the full UI UX course and let's get started. Alrighty, here we go. Here's the first one at the top. Again, these are all exactly the same except the colors are different. All the contents the same. And it's kind of like for a fictional service that like, I don't know, keeps politicians accountable or something stupid like that. <laughs> so that's what the content's based on. And we're gonna start with this top one up here. And one of the first things you wanna ask yourself is what is this page about? You know, what is this page about? What is it trying to say? What are the messages it's trying to convey? And in this case, throwing shade, right? So like if a politician's doing something bad, we're gonna put him in the spotlight, so to speak. You could play off of that idea with these accent graphics slash embellishments. So one, thing, one of the concepts I came up with for this one is basically to take a 45 degree angle long shadow from shade and just cast it over the entire page. So here's what I'm talking about. I'm not gonna do this whole thing because it, it took a little time to do this because you have to work with the pen tool. But basically, um, to show you kind of how I started, I just take the pen tool, hold shift all the way down and then maybe roughly around here, there we go. And then what I did is in order to make this all matched up and aligned properly, take this out right around there, go back to the pen tool. And what I did is try to imagine where the actual shadows might fall. So right there, okay, so I'm gonna go all the way around. And so you get the up point. Here is the finished asset. I've put down here so you don't have to sit there watching me do this. So I'm just gonna get this into position. Yeah, roughly around there is pretty good. And as you can see, it has opacity on it. I probably would change it like this real quickly and go back to my layers and put that to the bottom. Although this is not inside of that. Oh yeah, it is, okay, there we go. So I would do something like this. It's kind of a cool way to say throwing shade and we're gonna do it literally on the word shade itself. Um, and it looks cool and it's entirely achievable in CSS. So that's not a problem. Um, another thing that we could do um, is let's say this rep representative John Doe person, you know, did something illegal, whatever. Um, maybe that implies putting them behind bars. So one of the cool things you can do and in, in, it's not just for this little niche you know, purpose, like I just mentioned about throwing people behind bars, but you can, you can use accent graphics to accentuate columns and rows. And so what I mean by that is like a border. I'll show you what I mean. If you hit line or L, you'll get the line tool, but if you hit shift L, you get the arrow tool up here as well. Um, and the arrow tool is just a quick way to get arrows and you could change the size, you know, all cool stuff like that, right? So that's the arrow tool. And let's say um, I, I use it again here and we'll have it pointing up. And I'm gonna make this black. Okay, maybe right around there. And of course, I wanna get that into this. There we go. Okay, so there it is. We're gonna drag that into there. Okay, and then I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna replicate this for the other two columns. All right, so now we're looking kind of interesting. Interesting things are happening. This isn't exactly lined up. And if we wanted to, we could leave it exactly as is. And now we have a cool, more complete, more interesting concept. If you compare this, you know, the regular, just boring one to this one. And if you wanted to, you could also take that a step further. We could duplicate these, control D, 
right click, flip vertical, have them pointing down, and we could do even something kind of crazy like this and pull them up. And now it kind of looks like in a very, I guess you could say abstract sense, represents kind of like jail cells, like the, the, whole, the vertical bar cells, if you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, fun stuff. I would probably remove those ones or make them more like watermarks if you wanted to leave them. Uh, what would that look like? Well, we could just uh, decrease this quite a bit or grab the background and just make it a little bit darker and then situate them so that with the bracket key so that they're behind the text and not overlapping anything like that. So you could do that as well. I'm going to leave it like this. All right, so let's move on to another example. This example obviously didn't utilize any type of AI assets or anything like that. No image-based assets, just these, this element here and these elements down here. All right, so let's check a, another variation on this. And this time I decided to use um, Midjourney, the image generation AI tool that I covered yesterday to create kind of like a cool, like fiery area down here. Um, so if I find that, it is this element right here. And I believe the prompt that I used was something very similar to um, Firestream or Vector Firestream or something like that. So what I could do is situate this to the bottom. And if we drag it down enough, you could still read the type, but it's a little bit difficult. So one such embellishment that you can apply or accent is um, we could turn these more into cards and we can give them what is commonly referred to as a glass morphism, glass morphism, yeah, I, <laughs> technique or stroke, I guess you could say, or not, t not technique or stroke, or just, I guess you could say embellishment. Um, we could start off by, I'm just going to, to make this easier because I hate dealing with auto, auto layout sometimes, I'm not going to use a frame, I'm just going to use a rectangle for this quick demonstration. And I'm just going to wrap it around, right, right, oops, I think that was the type tool. We want the rectangle tool, so hit R, there we go. So now um, I'm gonna, going to put that beneath our icon and type, but also on top of this element here. And what we want to do is, we can make this dark and then we can come to click effects and then apply instead of drop shadow, a background blur. All right. So then in order to see this, I'm going to boost up the blur and then come over here and decrease the opacity um, of the layer. Now, obviously rep jaunt that needs to go above. Let's find it. There we go. And we can give it a little bit of a rounded corners. And so the purpose of doing this is so that, you know, th this, these highlights, these areas is like bright portions of the flames don't make it difficult to read the white text. All right. That's, that's the primary purpose. Now we could also go lighter with this. Like we could grab the background color and get, kind of go like this and then adjust the opacity. So if you wanted to have like a tint of sorts, you can as well. And you, of course you can also adjust the blur amount right here. This is very minimal blur. This is quite a bit, you know, quite a bit more in terms of blur. So this is one such way. Um, if I duplicate this, we'll see what this looks like being applied to the other elements, other cards so, or so. I think I'll probably take these and squeeze them in just a bit, just to get a little bit more white space. And if we wanted to, we could drag this up a little higher now to get more of it in view. Now that our cards are a little bit easier to read, essentially. So playing around with the, uh, the brightness and all that stuff, I will leave up to you. So very fun. I decided to, in order to do something at the top, I, I used Photoshop with a particular brush to take that asset that I just copied and just kind of put it at the top and it kind of just brings things together and makes this whole area a little bit more interesting. All right, so that's one such way or another way rather. Now let's do one that's a little bit more fun. And to do that, we're gonna take this and replicate it. And what's really cool is for accent, graphic, ah, accent graphics and embellishments, 
you could come up here to the little world icon and you could do a search um, or just click uh, visual assets and click on maybe illustrations. And you could see all these different crazy illustrations that most of them are free, um, or at least even if they're not free, they offer a certain select amount of assets for free. And so you could find a lot of really cool, just uh, different types of graphics and illustrations. So like crispy doodles, 100 line doodles, this is cool. So I was looking at this and I found a couple that I like, which I already picked out and they're at the bottom of my document here. So like, here's one, and this is one you could easily just make yourself. It's so simple. Oops, I don't wanna to go to that one. We're gonna go to this one, all right? So we could, there's a, a lot of different types of, uh, these types of doodles, they call them, that could be just thrown around in different areas of your design to make it more fun or interesting. So like another one might be this one down here, throwing shade, you see the eyeballs, the sussy, the sussy eyeball. So it speaks to what's happening in this design, essentially. Now, another thing that you can do to add texture to a layout um, is large typographic watermarks. So what we could do is just take this type shade right here. I'm gonna right click and just flatten it, which converts it to just um, vector. So you can no longer edit the actual type um, with your keyboard. But now it's easy just to, to manage and to be able to scale up easily instead of messing with the font size. Um, so now what we could do is take our left bracket key to make sure it's at the bottom, and then we can adjust the opacity almost to where you can barely even see it. And see how this kind of just adds what I call texture to make the layout a little bit more interesting. So I probably put these down a little bit, put this here, and there we go. So if I take these away real quick, you could see before, after, very cool. Here's one, before and then after. This is a little wild. <laughs> Um, and then a white and black, just monochromatic approach. Um, and then it just kind of gives you this interesting kind of playful feel with the type of graphics that we've chosen to integrate here. So now it is your turn to kind of operate under the same mentality that I'm trying to bestow upon you with your own challenge. So here is your challenge. Okay, so let's take a look at the instructions here. Finish the layout with embellishments and try to give it style. You know, make it its own unique style. So utilize AI to generate assets if you wish. That's not required, but you can. Um, this is for kind of like a, a, a fictional skateboard company. Maybe they made a special type of skateboard or something like that. So if you're going to use an asset, maybe like in this area or something, something that's relevant, right? Think, think, I don't want to give away, but it's obvious. Um, feel free to change the color in layout as shown. So if you want to move things around and put this in the middle instead, or you want to put these down here, or you want to have two rows of these, I mean, you can do that. I just want, I just want you to do something to make this thing unique. Um, I don't want just completely, you know, you submitting this and saying, oh, I'm done. You didn't incorporate assets or those um, accent graphics or the embellishments. Um, so you, but you do have freedom to add and remove content. So feel free to add content to help your, your layout. So if you wanna add more of these or add something else, that's fine too. So I'm just kind of really curious to see, oh, by the way, you can adjust the colors. So if you wanna make this like a dark mode, whatever, not a big deal. I just wanna see what you choose to do, what type of assets you use and how, how you use these embellishments to evoke certain emotions. Like if you, this is a real serious, you know, uh, type of product, I, then what are you gonna do? If, you, if it's gonna be fun and playful, what colors are you gonna use? You know, uh, what type of assets? All right, so hopefully you understand uh, the submission instructions are in the description. Uh, I will check out the submissions tomorrow. Um, try to get yours in within the first three to four hours of me uploading this video. Now we have time to review them, record them, edit the video, upload it, you know. So uh, definitely check out designcourse.com if you haven't for the full UI UX course. And sub up here if you haven't. And I'll see you soon. Goodbye.